Welcome to the Poor Man's Workshop. You watch those shows on television where they have all these, like, you know, millions of dollars in high dollar tools, fancy stuff, joiners, planers, and all that stuff. If you have that kind of equipment, this show is not for you. This is for elves who like to make things by hand or make things by hand simply because they can't afford all your ridiculously expensive tools. So, to begin with, the only power tools you're really going to need to make these toys is a drill and a jigsaw. And chances are, if you don't have one, you know somebody who does. Thin blades on the jigsaw are a good idea. And I'm going to show you today how to make some toys and then get ready for Christmas. Now, people spend way too much on that Chinese junk that ends up coming into this country full of all kinds of toxins, poisons, made by people who make 11 cents a day or whatever it is. And basically, you know, we could do that here by ourselves, forget China, and let's make our own toys, okay? However, for the things you can't make, and this is something big that I'm pushing personally this Christmas, shop locally. Go to the stores in your town. There are a lot of things you can do, and there's another segment all about that on the main page uh, on, Mace T on uh, Talk of the Town. So, to begin with, all right, elves, class, we're going to do this really simple because it's just got to be that way. We're not going to do a lot of complicated silliness, all right? This is the poor man's workshop. Now, you see in front of me some of the stuff I've already made or in the process of making. There's a doll bed. Didn't take long to make. Rocking reindeer, rocking horse, uh, train set, cars. Um, now, uh, pickup truck. This is West Virginia. we got to have a pickup truck. That's like a law. It's an elf rule. Uh, I think it's like right up in there in the top ten. All West Virginia toy makers and uh, elf assistants have to make at least one pickup truck. Now, keep it simple. Like I said, down below this video you're going to see some patterns of some of these things that you could make if you can't draw real well. This stuff mostly I started out just doing freehand. Okay, it was not difficult. Like this car. I love this little car. It's kind of like, you know, uh, Reminds me of the, the Green Hornet, you know. But this is just something I just freehand drew on MDF. Now, what I use is not uh, pine um, or, or any kind of grained wood. I use MDF flooring for making my toys. The other stuff is nice, but the grain uh, shows through, and you're trying to paint stuff that isn't supposed to look like it has a grain unless you're staining. If you're staining it, obviously, go with the one by. But if you're looking for an easy way to do this and an expensive way, you can get a 4x8 sheet of MDF for about 30 bucks. Now a couple more with tax. And MDF is a, uh, a dense material. It's, it's heavy as a single sheet. So if you can't carry a big sheet or if you don't have a lot of room in your car, almost every lumber yard will cut it in half for you. So the 4-foot way. So you have two 4-foot sections. It's, it actually comes 4-foot 1-inch by 8-foot 1-inch. And, um, like I said, it's really easy stuff to work with, easy to sand, easy to cut, and, uh, it, you know, it's a good product for, for making toys and things. All of these things you see here were made using the MDF. Now, the other thing that you have to have, and this is critical, is your cup of official elf coffee. This happens to say North Pole Blend, and, you know, having a cup of coffee on a a Saturday morning in your garage or your little shop or wherever you're making these things, you know, it's just kind of essential. Now, I'm going to show you a few of the patterns that um, I've made over the years. Uh, here's an airplane, very simple to make. This is uh, kind of a takeoff of uh, a P-51. I made my pattern for the rocker using a five-gallon can of drywall on the edge of a board and just traced it. Rounded the edges, cut it straight, and uh, that's it. Um, here's my pattern for the rocking reindeer and my pattern for the rocking horse. The legs are simple. I use the same leg, front, back, left, right, on reindeer and horses. It's just a very simple thing and that's really all there is to it. The, uh, here's my train set and uh, that's my pattern. And what I do is what makes these cool is I cut them like this for a reason. Because when you start making more than one, they link together and, uh, you know, kind of looks cool like that. This, 
sides. I just cut little shapes for the sides of these. Uh, for the fenders, I just freehanded that. And it's, it's just not that difficult, really. But again, we're going to include some patterns. So, uh, let's get started. We're going to make a rocking horse today. And a, uh, maybe a few other things, depending on how time is. Thank you for tuning in to the uh, Poor Man's Workshop on Talk of the Town on MaceTV.net. Okay, something else I want to mention before I get started tracing out the pattern, which is uh, pretty much a no-brainer, but um, I really do recommend that you buy these things. Uh, they're not that expensive. The pre-made wheels is your front wheel, your back wheel, and the pre-made little axles make your life a lot easier. If you've got to cut your wheels out, you can. Um, just use a compass or a shot glass or whatever you got laying around that's the right size. Trace it, cut it, sand it. A lot of work. If you can afford them, get a bunch of wheels. Now, they usually come in packs of 50. Hint, hint. Make some extra toys. What we usually do, or what I do, is I like to make toys. Uh, let's face it, man. There's going to be a lot of kids this year who are not going to have a great Christmas. And anything under the tree is better than nothing under the tree. So, since you got this great big piece of 4x8, chances are you're going to have a lot left over. Make some extra toys and uh, bring them down to your local place that gives toys away to kids. If you can, if you want to save the money on the uh, axles, um, dowel rod. Just make sure you get the right size that fits into the wheels. Piece of dowel rod, cut up, works great, no problem. Now, to get started. Very simple. Now, oh, another thing. When you're buying your MDF, look around for a broken piece. Um, that's what I did. I found a piece that had a busted corner, and they knocked 10% off. That's three bucks. So, you know, it's a savings. When you're doing this, don't spill your coffee on the MDF. MDF does not do well when it's wet. So don't get it wet. Take your pattern. You lay it down using as minimal amount of space. Don't do this in the middle and then mess up the whole rest of the MDF. Start at the edges. Now, I know most of you probably figure that, but there's a few that might not have. Just take your pencil, a nice sharp point, trace out your rocking horse pattern. Um, you print out the pattern by right-clicking on it, save as, save uh, to your computer, and then um, Cut it out with a razor knife or a pair of scissors. And, uh, you know, patterns are free. Piece of paper doesn't cost much. You print it up. So if you mess up the first one, no big deal. Just do another one. Okay. So, there's my horse pattern. Now, here's the, uh, the rocker pattern. And I put that right on the edge. And again, up close to the horse without going into it. To make sure that uh, I get as much use out of this MDF as I can. You're going to need two of these, obviously. Pardon me if I state the obvious. So, okay. Now you got your horse. You got your two rockers. Here's your leg. Take the leg. Don't mess up an, an edge. Um, you know, for this because it has no straight edge. So you know, come in a little bit. So you have good edge to work with, because let's face it, we do start with the flat edge on all the cars, trains, trucks, all that kind of stuff. Make sure that the pattern doesn't have the table under it. Slide the board away. Put your hand under there, gauge across where it is. Now, pull it back, it's clear, and we start cutting. Come in with the uh, scroll saw, the jigsaw, um, so both... Uh, sides of the plate are on the board, otherwise you're going to end up with something like that. So start out like this. Stop the jigsaw before you pull it out and make sure that the blade is no longer jumping up and down. What happens if you don't is, as you lift it, the blade smacks down onto the thing as you're pulling it out quite often, bends the blade, and you got to go out and buy new blades.
Now this is not an exact science. Again, this is the poor man's workshop. If your horse has a bigger belly, you didn't quite follow the line, that's okay. You know, this is just my version of what this horse is supposed to look like. And even I don't always follow the line. So uh, don't worry about it. Just make sure you get your shape. If it's a little bit off the line, you know, try to stay close, but don't sweat the small stuff. And as you can see, this NDF cuts pretty easily. Now, when you're coming in to cut your next piece, and as you're cutting into something, you go from two sides, all right? Don't try to turn your jigsaw around uh, on a tight corner like that. It's not going to work. When you're coming in again for your next coat, pay attention to your other pattern so that you don't uh, cut through it. Now you notice I backed out of here and came back and started again to come up around the eyebrow, uh, the horse's eyebrow. Okay. On the ear, I mean, on the top, on the ear, I went a little bit further past it so that I could come back this way. When you're at the end of a cut and you're going into another cut, stop the jigsaw, let it stop, hold your piece in place, especially if it's coming loose, and um, let the jigsaw stop moving again. That's very important. Now, you want to give your horse a longer tail? Go for it. No problem. As you saw, sometimes you can't start with both cleats on. It just doesn't work. But try to whenever possible. And there's the rough cut of our horsey. Okay, now a couple of tech tips. This stuff has a really fine dust to it, and it'll clog your sinus. So, if you don't have one of those high-dollar respirators, which most of us don't, or not even a dust mask around, use a bandana, you know? Just put a bandana around your face, tie it up, because that's actually what I use anyway. Now, as you can see, I've gone ahead and cut everything out. A uh, couple of tech tips, again, is to, um, when you're cutting, take your time, okay? And run it slowly, because you want to have as little sanding as possible. If you're anything like me, you hate sanding, okay? The sanding is the part that takes a long time, and you just... And it, Makes you crazy. So, make your cuts as good as you can and it'll save you a lot. Now, I haven't even sanded this yet and you can see how lucky I got with the way it turned out. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and sand these. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other important things you need to know. Uh, oh, as you can see, as I've worked my way in, 
like this. Cut from the outside in, even if that means cutting part of one piece and then part of the next piece. That way you always have a good table for your jigsaw to sit on and you're not teetering it all over the place and uh, coming up with all kinds of bad cuts. If you go a little far beyond on a turn, no big deal. Come from the other side, trim it back with the jigsaw. Once again, saves you a lot of sanding time. And now I'm going to uh, sand these out and then we'll be back in just a moment after this commercial interruption. The law isn't always black and white. When you need a lawyer who knows the law, call Michael Santa Barbara. Auto, truck, motorcycle accidents, wrongful death, free initial consultations, no recovery, no fee. Appointments available 24-7, including home and hospital. For all your personal injury cases, call Michael. Okay, we're just about ready to go. Um, one of the things that you really do want to pay attention to, one of the few places that it's, it's critical uh, to get the good lines on it, are the rockers, because you want them to rock properly. You don't want them to pump, 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 pump. You know, kids look at that and say, ah, psh, junk. So, you match them up after you cut them, a little block uh, sanding piece, and I use 220 to sand everything. And just run this over until it's nice and smooth and everything matches up, you know, really well. And that's it. Now, <clears throat> to assemble it, you start out with the legs, okay? Lay your horsey down. You put your front leg on and your back leg on and uh, take a, a spare piece of uh, the MDF, you know, any, any piece, and just put it under here and that keeps the legs, uh, from, you know, makes it easier to nail them. And use inch and a quarter, not railroad spikes, not gutter spikes, just inch and a quarter. Glue is a good thing. It helps. If you don't have any, okay, well, then you do without. Personally, I like to put glue, especially when you can actually open it. Put a little on the inside of the leg, up at the top. Lay your leg where it's going to go. Now, this is where you get a little creative license. Um, how you want the legs to actually look and the way a horse is, is going to look. You lay them out so it's kind of like the horse is in stride. There's no specific placing of the legs other than you want to make sure, and this is a good thing about using a square block on the bottom, make sure that the block is about square and everything looks proportionate so that, and the angles so that your horse isn't like nose diving while it's just sitting still. Take your rocker, put it on, align everything up, make sure it looks right. Then your inch and a quarter finish nails. Now what I'll do is I'll put one in each leg to start in case I want to adjust the angle. Again, before you put the final nail in the top, get it started, um, put the rocker to make sure that the legs don't stick out or at odd angles, things like that, so that, you know, everything works. Otherwise, if the legs are sticking below the horse, obviously, that's eh, not going to do you a lot of good. So, like I said, poor man's workshop, common sense. So, you lay that out, everything looks pretty hunky-dunky. That happens to everybody. You notice I didn't cut that. It'd probably work better if I had my glasses on. Okay, I put three nails in each leg. Hello, that's for the other side of the house. I know you're looking at me doing this and thinking, if he can do it, anybody can do it. That's true. Pretty much anybody. There are certain things some people are just not equipped to do. Like, for instance, 
cooking. For all my skills and abilities, one of the things that I really, really am not good at is cooking. So you'll never see me doing a cooking show. Now, when you get the other legs on, you want to uh, put your block back in on top of the other ones and um, get your glue. Now, what you want to do is first line up the legs. And eyeballing them works just fine. Line up your legs and set your uh, block back in. Let this block come back a little bit, helps it. So when you set your leg in place, you can see the other one. You just want to eyeball it so that it ends about the same place and it's about the same angle. So just look straight through and you only see one leg. Now, do yourself a favor. Let that set up a little bit. Otherwise, you're going to be chasing it all over with the glue. It's going to be slippery. So we're going to let that set up a bit and then come back and nail it. Okay, the legs are in place. Put your block in between the legs for support. Your glue again. Put it down on the bottom part of the legs. When you set this down on the horse, what you want to do is you want to make sure that the uh, horse is about centered on the rocker. Okay? And you want to put it... Um, so the bottom of the horse, so that you kind of do a median line of the horse's body. And you want it to sit just about like that. Make sure the legs aren't sticking out of the bottom. And again, let that set because otherwise you're going to nail it and you're going to be chasing it all over the place. Okay, after you've got the legs on, you've got the one side nailed on, nail set, everything else, that's good to go. Put your block in between the legs. Put a block on the other side of the legs to make up for the rocker. Set your rocker in place, you glue it down, again, no nails right away, put down your glue, then get a square of some kind. I like speed square, but you can use any kind of square. And when you set it down, you want to make sure that it's even all the way around. Otherwise, your rocking horse is not going to work. Now, try as you might to get this perfect you might end up, as you're sanding it, with one side a slightly different profile. Now, when you put these uh, rockers on, make sure that you put them on the way you sanded them. Okay? So you set them together, you look at them, profile's the same, everything's smooth, you make sure you stack them that way too. That way, even if it's off a little bit, it'll still work just fine. Something I should have mentioned before and didn't, and I apologize, is that it pays to start a couple of nails before you put things in place, uh, even for gluing. That way you don't have to drive it um, through and it's less likely to break that glue bond. So as you've seen, I've done that here, and you hold everything firmly, and you tap it that one last shot. It doesn't move. Before you put the other th uh, two nails on each leg, Let's take it apart and let's make sure that it works. And there it is. Well, that's pretty much it for this episode of the Poor Man's Workshop. Thank you for watching. Here's our rocking horse. Here's one that's in the middle of being painted. For filling the holes, you can use some uh, flour paste. Or if you've got a little latex caulking, make sure it's non-toxic. That's important. Children will chew. So you don't want to use toxic paints. Stay with the latex, the child paints, okay? And uh, the uh, toys themselves, no matter what you're making, it's all the same principle. Once you lay your pattern out, it's the same cutting, just different shapes. You want to get fancy. Um, what I did, I have a router, and I routed the edges. Makes it look a little cooler. If you don't, make sure you sand them. Get that sharpness off, because this MDF is a little sharp. Make sure you sand those edges there really well. Send me an email. Tell me what you think of the show. If you like it, maybe we'll do some more coming up with uh, home repairs and uh, things like that. So, thank you for watching. And if you see me around town, don't forget to say, Hiya, Dan. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.